Hey everybody, how is it going? It is your pal, Sal here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to our share discography journey. Today, we are listening to our 18th studio album, which much like the one from the 60s and the one from the 70s, is just plainly called Share. However, this is the first one to not use the fake accent that they <laughs> that Sunny was like put on her name, you know, to make her seem more, uh, you know, international, I guess, if you will, but it's, so it's just Share. Um, and it was released on November 10th of 1987. So before we really get talking about this album, it's important to note that uh, it was her first album in five years. And so you question, like, well, what happened in those five years? And uh, in between, you know, I Paralyze and this album, and uh, boy, oh boy. <laughs> Lots went down, Cher was on top of the world, and uh, we're going to detail it through really quickly here. So as we talked about last week during I Paralyze, uh, coincidentally at the same time she was starring on Broadway and come back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean, and then ended up doing the film version of it in the same year of come back to the Five and Dime, Jimmy Dean, Jimmy Dean. And at the time, uh, while she was performing on Broadway, the, I believe the director who was going to end up directing on the film Silkwood came and saw her and the show and was like, guess what? I would like you for my next film. And uh, she ended up starring well no yes starring technically um third build in uh silkwood more you can obviously look on more details on that but which was released in 84 um i'm gonna quickly detail my thoughts on each film as we go through it real quick but in 80 silkwood uh, i'm sure it's a good film i watched it i thought it was kind of boring i'm not gonna lie but after that she ended up getting uh nominated for best supporting actress uh which is incredible she didn't win but uh Eh, you know what, I'll let that one go. It wasn't one of my favorite roles I've ever seen her do. And then in 85, she starred in the film Mask, which if you've not seen, I've only seen Mask once, and once was... I mean, I think I'm going to probably watch it again after doing this video, but I... Oh, God. Heartbreaking. <laughs> one of the saddest films I've ever sat through. Cher delivers an amazing performance, and weirdly enough, was not Oscar-nominated for it. Uh, I think she might have been Golden Globe-nominated, but... uh. I don't really pay attention to the Golden Globes. Um, but that was also the year that because she didn't wasn't nominated, she came in the very scandalous <laughs> dress. And then after that, uh, she starred in three films in 87, all of which I'm sure you heard. So basically, the first two films to come out in 87 were, uh, we're gonna, well, we'll start, I don't know which one came first. I think I wrote, I didn't write this down, but I know that two came before album and one came after. But basically, the first film she did was, uh, or one of the two, either way, if I'm wrong, the two films she did were The Witches of Eastwick and Suspect. Um, both of which movies that I do own on Laserdisc. <laughs> the the laser disc for Suspect is actually really pretty. I mean, look at this. Woo! Um, so Suspect, good film. Love me a good crime drama. That's always great. Um, Dennis Quaid looks great in it. Um, as for The Witches of Eastwick, I, I'm going to be a friend here. I hate this movie. I, so I remember I watched it once and I hated it. And then last year I bought it on Blu-ray and I was like, I'll buy it on Blu-ray and I'm sure I'll love it more. Hated it. I don't think it's funny. I don't think it's witty. I hate Jack Nicholson. Um, I don't get what they're, I, I don't get The Witches of Eastwick. I don't like it. Um, and, uh, I'm probably never gonna watch it again. I don't like it at all. Okay. So then after that, she, um, releases, uh, this album, Share. It's amazing to me that she, uh, had time. We're gonna go back to the Share album, which is the point of this video in a quick second here. But then after that, she released the mother of all films, um, Moonstruck. A film, like I said, I do own on Laserdisc and uh, Blu-ray. This film, I, I mean, I, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but it's absolutely incredible. I love showing people Moonstruck. Everything about it in it is so worthy uh, of um, everything. She so deserved the Oscar. She technically deserves the Oscar for Mask, if we're going to be honest, as to what her best performance is. But uh, the fact that our Sherilyn has the Oscar means the world to me. So that came out at the end of the year. Uh, this Moonstruck came out in December. So this album, Cher, came out in... November 10th of 1987, and uh, it was, it's, again, it's kind of crazy to think that she had time to do this, uh, but released a brand new album of all new material. Uh, well, some of the songs are actually covers, which we'll detail you know, as we go along, but uh, the album was a very big success. It charted number 32 on the Billboard 200, and after, I believe, Prisoner and um, I Paralyze Not Charting, amazing, and there were a total of five singles. The lead single, I Found Someone, charted at number 10, which is just 
great. We've not seen Cher get that high up in a while. The second single was We All Sleep Alone, which charted number 14. Again, a top 20 single. Great. The third single was Skin Deep, a song I do not know which charted number 79. So that wasn't looking too good. And the last two singles, Bang Bang, the 1987 version, which, oh, it's so good. And uh, Main Man were promo only singles. So this album is Cher fully taking into effect the rock goddess era of her life, which, which as she would for the next two albums after this. Um, the cover is iconic. I do believe it's around this time that the first um, incarnation of the Turn Back Time outfit is um, present. This is an album that, um, like I said, I know three songs off of it, so the, coincidentally the first three. It's full of such amazing hits, which are those first three. I love the cover of this. I'm so excited to finally take the time, sit through and listen to this. This was Cher back on top of the world. And then with the next album, which I do know in full Heart of Stone, she would go even farther. So I think it's time to pay. I feel like this one kind of gets a little lost in the shuffle sometimes um, in terms of like the album itself, but uh, I'm excited to sit here and listen to it with you guys. So we begin with track number one, which is just an iconic masterpiece. This is I Found Someone. Let's do it. I should also say a couple other things. This was her first album with Geffen Records. It's her new label. Here we go. Don't you know so many things that come and go? I got to turn this part up right here. I love it. Just like the love I thought I found in you. And I remember. Okay, that was I Found Someone. And before I get into like my thoughts on this song, I just want to say two things that I forgot to um, mention uh, at the beginning of this video. This is the first Cher album being it released in 87 that was predominantly released on CD. I Paralyzed was a released one of the, it was probably one of the first to be released on CD in 87 because I looked up on Discogs, but this was the first one that on its first issue was released on CD. So the times were changing a little bit. Um, so I'm not really sure. I'll have to look it up in a second where like side A and side B are, but you get the drift there. Um, and also, uh, one of the producers that, uh, Cher brought on, and this is a perfect segue into this song, uh, for this album was the iconic one and only Michael Bolton, who if I was to ever rank who my favorite male vocalist is, it's, it's Michael Bolton and I, I love him. And I'm almost positive he has a version of this song too. I know there's another Cher song that it's on the next album, which is um, You Wouldn't Know Love, which I know, I know he does have a cover of this too, but he wrote it. That's the specific thing about it. So either way, um, the song was originally recorded and released by a lady named Laura Branigan, uh, who I'm not too familiar with. I'm, sh I'm almost positive I've heard her version be before, um, but it was a while ago, so I'll have to revisit it again. But Cher's version, I mean, <laughs> I mean, this is everything. I, I feel so blessed that I've been lucky enough to see her do this live at the, at the Here We Go Again tour. Um, oh, and watching her come out those sliding doors open. It's, it's, it's heaven, honestly. It's such a good song. It's so 80s. Uh, so worthy of being a top 10 single. It's just, it's that good. Um, Cher delivers it. The fact that her vocal is, ah, oh, this is some of her best vocals. Um, what can I say that already hasn't been said, but, um, 
God damn, it is that bitch and I love it. Track number two, another amazing masterpiece. This is We All Sleep Alone. We're kind of dialing back just a little bit. Somebody somewhere turns off the lights. Somebody all alone faces the night. Sooner or later, we all sleep alone. Nobody knows that. Oh, my God. Holds the key to your heart. And also, I forgot this. John Bon Jovi has a writing credit on this. My God. Okay, that was We All Sleep Alone. And again, what can I truly say about uh, the lyrical content of it? I mean, it, it, this song can hit home at some nights. Um, there Wasn't there a sheer song that we covered that I was like, oh my god, this is kind of like reflective of We All Sleep Alone. It's something, am I, am I crazy? Hang on, we're just gonna type in share sleep. Am I, am I crazy? It's, it's on one of these older albums, I thought, right? I hate to sleep alone. I totally forgot about that. So yeah, um, I mean, here we are, full, full come full circle. I mean, I, yeah, this song is just incredible. It was remixed um, for the Believe album, oddly enough, and tacked on at the end of the album, and it works really well there too, honestly. Um, I love this song. I mean, it, it's sad, it's heartbreaking. Cher's vocal is amazing. Um, it's pure 80s, man. It's great. Track number three is a song we already all know. Um, it's a song that's amazing, incredible, and uh, written by Sonny Bono. He's back, um, but this time in a much different way. This, uh, this is the 1987 version of Bang Bang, My Baby Shot Me Down, promptly titled just on this album, Bang Bang. Here we go. Gotta make sure this is up all the way.
good. It's too good for us. Okay, that was Bang Bang, the 1987 version, and um, this is how you redo a song. This is how you make it even better than the original. This is absolutely incredible, this version of this song. I mean, I was introduced to it uh, during when I uh, got the CD of the live, the farewell tour, and I thought that this was like a live only like version of the song, like there was no studio version, and then I discovered that there was one, and I was like, oh my god! Um, it's so good. It's just too good. It's, I mean, come on. I mean, how do you take a song that would at this point have been, what, 20 something years old? Yeah, a little over 20 maybe years old and make it even better than it was back in the day? I mean, my God, it's just, we're not, we're not, we don't deserve it. Um, ah, oh, ah, uh, oh, ah, oh, it's too good. It's, ah, oh, my God, I love it. Every time I hear it, I'm like, this is the, this is the, this is it. This is, this is amazing, you know? Um, oh, God, so good. Okay, so for the rest of the album, we have all songs I do not know. So we begin with track number four, Main Man, which was one of the, it was the um, fourth, or was the, well, it was the first of the promo singles, but the fourth released single. You're my main man. Okay, we're slowing it down a bit. This sounds like something you could hear like on like the Half Breed, Half Breed or Gypsies, Tramps and Thieves albums right now. My feet so it's a little jarring almost. It's like something gonna happen. You're my main man. That's what the This sounds familiar. Yeah, have I heard this before? I like it though. Oh, you're my main man. Ah. Ah. This is nice. Ah. This would pop off live, like in concert, like imagine lighters. Ah! I love it. This is good. I'm shocked that I didn't remember this one. that this was released only as a promo only single because it's really really good like and especially you know after the first three songs they're very um sad kind of well i found someone is positive but let's just be honest it's a little dark sounding you know what i mean this is a lot more positive a lot more happier it's kind of like a nice little shift in the in the themes of this album so far that chorus is so pretty and especially in the verses it sounds like a classic 70s share song but then immediately like for the chorus it transports you to the 80s um this gives you the best of both worlds it's like you remember the 70s okay we still love them but this is just how we do it a little more now um that was good wow that i'm gonna stand a lot more now because that one was really pretty i'm kind of mad i didn't know this one all that like i it sounds familiar but i can't i 
I can't say if I've heard it before or not, but um, good shit, man. Um, yeah, kind of sad. Only promo, only single, but uh, we gave her a little love today. Track number five, Give Our Love a Fightin' Chance. And it's spelled F-I-G-H-T-I-N apostrophe, so you know it's, she means business. Scary, scary sounds. I think I like where this is heading. Okay. So I think this is pre chorus right here. Oh, here we go, chorus. This is kind of sounding like living on a prayer right now. I would say that. Sad. It's sort of dark it out like in the fields. Okay, that was Give Our Love a Fighting Chance. And while I'm not, I'm gonna be upfront, technically out of um, the five songs we've listened to, uh, technically my least favorite. Um, but that that's, doesn't really say much because I really didn't like it. Um, what's interesting is that this one has much more of a pre-chorus um, uh, into a chorus. And at first when it, the pre-chorus came, I was like, that's it, that's co the chorus? And I was like, oh wait, no, 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 we're still, we still have a little ways to go. Um, this is much like Main Man where, um, it, it, or at least I kind of in like I found someone too where it kind of has this darker sound at the beginning and you get the sense that Cher is you know, taking the um, the embodiment of like this woman who's like, so you think that this is it, you know, like this is all it. But she's at the end, she kind of is breaking down almost and saying, begging, like, please, come on, like, let's try and make this work. Like, let's do something. And it's kind of celebratory in that, in that way. And kind of really good. Um, kind of shocked that this wasn't a single either. It does kind of sound a little bit like living on a prayer. Um, but I mean... I'm not mad at that, you know, per se. So, um, I liked it, actually. And while I kind of feel bad saying it was technically my least favorite, which is true so far, this album, um, I really just like it. So, um, good closer to side A. So, um, I liked it. Track number six, the first song of Side B. This is Perfection, which features Bonnie Tyler and Darlene Love. And just so you guys know a little bit about me, two artists I do know, I don't like stand them hardcore, but with uh, Bonnie Tyler, the, the first song that comes to mind is not um, Holding Up for a Hero or Total Eclipse of the Heart. It's actually the song, It's a Heartache. Uh, growing up, I was obsessed with the movie Toothless, and there's a scene in the movie where they use that song, and I, I always have just loved that song. So that's what I think of when I think of Bonnie Tyler. And for Darlene Love, me being the musical theater grad, graduate um, and obsessed with the original Broadway production of Carrie the Musical. Her as Miss Gardner singing the songs in An Unsuspecting Hearts. Love you, Darlene. So, um, love them. So here we go. Perfection. <laughs> oh my god. Then that's definitely Bonnie. And it's Darlene. This is a good start to side B, actually. This 
kind of sounds like living in a prayer again, too. Oh my god. And I'm into it. I wore my pride as my protection, I like that lyric. Okay. Was not expecting that. Okay, that was perfection, and another, wow, whoa, that was really, really good. So first of all, uh, the one song that I was thinking of, and I was getting confused, well, I knew that they were two different songs, but um, Cher has another uh, trio song that she does with, um, I, I don't know, I forgot the names of the ladies she does it with, but um, it's the Love Can Build a Bridge, I've heard that before. And um, those, I believe, it's not credited as featured, it's like the three of them, and it's like a trio. This is is labeled as featuring Bonnie's Tyler and Darlene Love, which makes a lot of sense because they're really predominantly heard in the beginning and more towards the background in this song, but they add so much flair to it. Um, I like this song. It's different lyrically, and it's almost kind of like... Uh this is kind of like mirror image if it was good. It's about, you know, in this world that uh, Cher lives in, she's struggling for perfection, but she just can't get it. And she's in this never ending fight to achieve, and especially all women in pop music, uh, to achieve perfection. And you just, nobody's perfect. That doesn't exist. Um, so, wow, that's actually like, that was deep. I was like, Cher, Bonnie and Darlene, I love ya. Um, that was really good. Kind of shocked it wasn't a single, especially because those are two, very, all three are big, very big artists. So, um, goddamn, what a shame. And a good opener to the second side of the album. So uh, I'm happy to know Perfection a lot more now. This was really, really good. Track number seven has a title I really like, Dangerous Times, which they are. We're always living in dangerous times. So here we go. The vocals here sound kind of like demo-y, like unfinished weirdly. It's weird. Okay, I feel comfortable saying that this was technically my least favorite of the album so far. Um, it's fine. Lyrically, um, it's, uh, I mean, it's kind of, oh, sorry, someone was outside my window. Um, it, it's, um, how would I describe this? Uh, 
it kind of reminds me of back on my feet again or but is it back on the street again what is it from um black rose um where i'm kind of like i like the title um but the message of this kind of is like misleading to me like where it's just like these are dangerous times so i need you to take care of me i need you in these dangerous times and i'm kind of like eh I, I don't know, with a title like that, I would have maybe liked something a little different. So for this one, I mean, the song itself sounds fine. Um, weirdly enough, the vocal sounds a little more demo-y. It sounds a little scratchier. Um, not even in Cher's delivery, just the way that the audio quality sounds with it. Um, but um, I'm comfortable for now saying this one was technically my least favorite. Track number eight, the third single, which charted at number 79, Skin Deep. <laughs> This is kind of going on to prisoner camp territory. That's a fun sound. Okay, uh, that was Skin Deep, uh, the third single, which chart number 79, and um, was not expecting this whatsoever. It is vastly, um, uh, and, oh god, it, it does not fit in with the rest of this album. What I find interesting is that I brought up the Wikipedia page, and um, this is, uh, it, right here it says, Al Music's Joe F. Promise later described it as a club hit with the almost forgotten Madonna-ish dancey ditty Skin Deep, a radical departure from the album's other songs, yet a definite highlight. Um, which is why, at first I was like, I don't know if I'm putting a like next to it, but then, you know, I was thinking about it. And when you separate it out of um, the album, which is kind of hard to do because, I mean, it is in the album. It does kind of deliver on the camp that Prisoner kind of gives us, which I kind of admire. But uh, I'm kind of shocked made the cut for this album because I would argue that the, you could have had much, literally the first six songs, those are all better singles than Skin Deep. There's a reason why this one was the lower charting one is because it just doesn't, doesn't seem right. I'm putting a like next to it, though, because if I take it out of the context, I was kind of feeling it. Um... But yeah, weird choice for, I mean, it, there's a reason why it's probably a little buried in, towards the end of the track list, that's for sure. Track number nine, Working Girl. Oh, oh my god. Oh no, she's a working girl. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Great. 
Oh my god. Oh my god. That was a backing vocal, as someone was positive. Ah. This is good. We're going to man's world. That's funny. It's funny, she's saying it's in a man's world, considering it just a, less than 10 years later, she'd be releasing an album called It's a Man's World. Um, that was some good shit. So when I heard the title, I was like, okay, this is going to be about a prostitute, and I'm so here for that. Um, but from what I was getting out of the lyrics, it's not really about that. Um, it's about a work, it's literally a working girl, like in the general, like, nine to five business workday, living in a man's world, and all the shit she's got to take, and how it's, like, tough, and, like, we're just like, what do we do? Um, holy shit, this was really good uh it kind of it, they it could have been corny it really could have been corny um but it's not it works it really does work and this could have been a single as well too um holy shit i'm gonna listen to this one definitely a lot more times i was feeling it so i'm um, working girl a plus in my book track number 10 the final track of the album hard enough getting over you and this sounds like a ballad to me so That's so 80s. Ah. For the first time. The first time. In such a long time. It's really gonna be alright. Now you're asking me to let you walk back into my mind. Something I can't bring myself to do. sad closer to this album so the gist of this song is that this man that broke Cher's heart before is trying to come back in and she kind of feels tempted I mean we can't blame her um to you know go back to him but she's just like you know what no it was hard the last time it's just it's hard enough getting over you I'm not going through that again um a plus and that's kind of nice too considering we didn't really get a whole lot of ballads per se on this for well it's hard because we found someone who's a little more upbeat. So like Main Man is a little more ballady, but you know what I mean? There wasn't like a whole lot of it. Well, it, when I think of 80 pow 80s power ballads, Main Man is kind of more what leans into that. So you know what I mean? But um, yeah, that was oh, some sad shit right there. Okay, guys, we just finished Cher's 18th studio album. And uh, 
Whew, God damn, this is easily the best album I think that I've listened to personally for me since um, I'd Rather Believe in You. Um, it kind of reminded me a lot of, the, of that album in a sense. We have kind of like a very, you know, big opening and then again, like a slow ballad. I don't, there's a lot of similarities I feel between the two and I appreciate that. They both have their kind of like cheesier song, I would argue. Um, I'd Rather Believe in You's cheesiest song is Spring. For this one, it's kind of more skin deep. But um, this album is jam packed full of potential singles and it kind of shocks me that out of well I mean I mean half of the album was released as a single so I mean that says something but I would argue that um Skin Deep maybe should have not been a single and maybe they could have picked anything else in its place because that's a little more fitting in the album I like the song as uh, on its own but in the context of the album it's not really my favorite so obviously the first three songs I found someone we all sleep alone in Bang Bang 1987 version what more can I say iconic main man deserves a lot more respect. I'm definitely gonna be listening to that one over and over again, because that was some, that was so good. Um, Give Our Love a Fight and Chance, beautiful. Perfection, what a fun little song that combines such great talent of women. I love that. Um, I feel the most lackluster song off of this album is Easily Dangerous Times. It just didn't do a whole lot for me. And while I don't really like Skin Deep, I can argue that Skin Deep is a lot more interesting than Dangerous Times. Um, so Skin Deep doesn't really work in the context of the album, but on its own, it's fun, it's campy, it's it's Prisoner 2.0, I'll let it go for that. Um, and then Working Girl, sad and, and like frocking out at the same time and hard enough getting over you, so sad. So that's Cher, the 18th studio album, and uh, I have to say I'm a fan now. This is one that I never really sought out, um, even though I've always loved the cover. I'm kind of shocked I didn't use that on my wall, but um, god damn, it's too good. I, I'm actually very amazed. I really sat through and I really, really enjoyed this album. So, um, yeah. Wow, I'm happy that I know this one now. So, uh, I'm like, like I said last week with I Paralyze, she needed to paralyze. She needed to stop moving and forward in her music career, take a break, do what she had to do, and then come back because the effort and everything she did is so evident in this album and the final product. Um, yeah. So what do you guys think of, um, share 1987 let me know in the comments below and also be sure to share your thoughts on all the films we mentioned <laughs> earlier in the in said video um i'm sad i don't own mask or silkwood but uh, hopefully one day that'll change um and even come back to the five and dime jimmy dean jimmy dean um so i will see you next week when we tackle the heart of stone album which um in case I haven't already hinted enough in many videos, love it. And uh, I have a fun little story about it too. So I'll see you guys then. Um, I'm glad you gave this album a fight and chance. And um, bang, bang, this video is over. I will see you guys later. Have an amazing day. Um, and that's it. Thank you all so much. I'll see you later. Bye.